Hello, my name is Ann Brock. I'm a pre-sales consultant with Right Star Systems. The purpose of today is to walk you through a brief demo of the BMC Helix IT Service Management Solution. This solution also is known as Remedy ITSM, probably use both terms interchangeably, but generally when I'm, Helix is generally referring to when it's running in the cloud, Remedy when it's running on premise. It's the same solution either way, so it's the same, got the same great capabilities. So the capabilities that are in Helix ITSM, whether again on-premise or in cloud, shown on this slide. Above the line, that's really the self-service application, and that comes in two flavors, Digital Workplace Basic and Digital Workplace Advanced. Today we will be looking at Advanced. Below the line is for the technician, it's called Smart IT, and it has all the features for your incident problem change, et cetera, the people who are working the tickets, getting things done. Both the end user and the technician have a mobile app or client that they can get to on their mobile device. It looks the same as what we're going to see in the web pages today, because BMC went with a mobile first design so that the whether you're working on your mobile device or you're working in a web browser, you're going to have the same experience. Now, this is within the IT service management realm. I did want to mention that BMC has a lot of other offerings that tie into the BMC Helix ITSM solution. Some of these solutions are available either in the cloud or on-premise, such as discovery, um, client management, some of the other ones as well. Some are strictly cloud-based only, such as chatbot or integration services, but can integrate in with an on-premise option. We are not looking at any of these today. I just wanted to put this slide up so you can pause the recording, read through these. Are there some of these that you would like to know more about? Just let us know. But the demo today is focused on Digital Workplace Advanced and on Smart IT. Okay, so let me switch over to Digital Workplace. This is a self-service portal. I'm logged in as a particular user, Joe, and he's coming into his catalog. Now, with Digital Workplace Advanced, you get a catalog of catalog, and that's one of the key concepts here. An easy to use one place to go for one-stop shopping wherever the backend request might go. So for example, if Joe were to click on this JIRA submit request and request this thing, this particular request, this is actually going to put a ticket into a JIRA system. It's not going to go to Remedy first and then to JIRA, or to the backend ITSM system first and then to JIRA. It's going to go directly to JIRA. So when we talk about a catalog of catalog, those are the kinds of things we're talking about. Similarly, you can do things with automation around like creating an Office 365 user. If I select that and I request it, it's actually going to use the workflow engine to go and create that Office 365 user and let me know when it's done. So a lot of automation capabilities with Digital Workplace Advanced to help out your self-service user. But of course, we have all the basics, right? Joe doesn't need anything complicated. He just is having a problem with the billing system. When he starts typing here, he's going to see a possible issue where issue type that he can re put in. He's also going to see some knowledge articles. So you can try this knowledge article, and you build those as you go and expose them out to the end users or not as you choose. And Joe doesn't really like that knowledge article, so he say no, he needs, still needs to put in a ticket. He's not even able to log in. So he's going to go ahead and say can't log in. Like anything you're seeing these days in the self-service portals, VPIX development, another question comes up. It says, no, 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 I'm in production. Well, we don't need to ask him. We know that URL. So that question disappears. Questions are configurable. You drag and drop them. This is in building forms. Very easy way for you to put things out here. Again, whether it's going back to your IT service management solution or a third-party app. You can also, of course, with the catalog, start bringing other groups onto the solution. So if I want to bring HR onto the solution, I can do things like um, onboarding an employee. I can go ahead and do that, select that request, and it's going to go ahead and walk me through the questions. And when I'm done, oh, this is just for the email, it'll go to whoever handles email. That could be an HR, that could be an IT, uh, somewhere else totally different. And I want to show one that's a more complex because this is where people are going, and that's around onboarding a new employee. Now I have eight bundled items here. One of those could have been those emails. It's not at the moment. So eight items here that I can go ahead and so 
walk through and select. I'm not going to do this because there's a lot to walk through, but I can bundle things together, put them out as one request, let my end user request them and walk through them. And then I, they can go ahead and submit all those. That's going to create a bunch of tickets in the back end. They're all going to go to the right places, whether security, HR, facilities, wherever they need to go. So a catalog of catalogs where you can come in and put things back into the IT service management solution or into the HR solution. There are, of course, more things. You've been seeing some marketing messages across here, so you're able to get information out. What I see here is based upon my entitlements, all that kind of thing. But I did want to mention the location part of this. Digital Workplace Advanced, I can actually set up locations in here where I import in my, um, my floor plans. So let's say I'm going to be visiting the BMC Houston office. I'm on the 15th floor, and maybe I want to find a, a particular asset. Maybe I'm in the conference room. So that's going to tell me where my conference room is and that it's available. I can go in and view the details of that conference room or the IT area, wherever I happen to be. And I can do things like check in or reserve it, do whatever I might want to do. You could even set up actions over here for getting fixes. So there is something I need to fix in this, in this particular area. I could put in a ticket straight from here. Now think about this a little bit as I'm, I'm walking through this and hitting on a couple of things. Maybe it's a printer I'm going to. And I found that printer, so I ran over to it, and maybe it's not working. Maybe something's going wrong. Well, I don't know the BMC office buildings. I don't know who IT is. I can point my phone at the QSR code on that printer. It's going to bring me into the screen on my mobile device, and I can go ahead and report a printer issue straight from here. Not working. And then that can go ahead and go to wherever the um, appropriate person is to handle this ticket. So I'm not running around over the floor, around the floor saying, well, who the heck is responsible for this? Does anybody know? Because I'd really like to get this printer working. And it just shows up as a ticket in my queue, and I can go on and do some more location things or work on my catalog, however I want to do. So that's a fast look at the end user self-service. Just know it's very powerful. There's a lot of things you can do with it. I'm going to switch now to the back end where my support analysts are working, where all those tickets are coming in through, and sitting here looking at my ticket console. First thing I want to mention about the back end is where BMC started with Smart IT was the Smart Recorder. What they wanted to do was make it easy to take tickets when somebody does call up instead of using the self-service portal. Um, tried to make them you know, very easy to go ahead and select somebody and get all the information without doing a lot of pop-up clips, right? I don't like having to click on something, wait for it to pop up, click on something else, wait for it to pop up in a window. Right here, I'm able to get a lot of information without having to click on pop-up windows. So Mary calls in, she's having a VPN issue. I'm getting a lot of information about Mary. She's a VIP, I need to be nice to her. See, she's running a MacBook. I might wanna attach that to this ticket. And over here, I can see a couple of useful things. Well, we're having an outage of VPN. So I can let Mary know I've tied her to that outage record and that we're working to get that resolved. If I suspect maybe it's just Mary doesn't quite know the right knowledge article, I can go ahead and attach a knowledge article to this ticket because maybe she's just not quite doing it right on her MacBook. Or of course, I could go ahead and read it to her. But I'm going to go ahead and link it to this ticket and create an incident and go ahead and save it. So I've got an incident ticket. Again, I had a ton of information in front of me. Still got that information in front of me because I've got my resources tab over here where I can see the things I attached. And of course, I can see things related to Mary. Well, if I wanted to go ahead and email Mary that particular knowledge article, I could. I could say, Mary, the right Mary man, please try this. And I could go ahead and attach that right from here and send that. And all of those, of course, are connected here on this activity tab. So when I refresh my ticket, I'll see that email get sent. She emails back. That's going to go ahead and get, get attached on the activity log as well. So we're keeping status back and forth. You see, I've still got a less LA left on this. I don't have to go too fast. But again, just want to go back to Smart Recorder one more time. And again, just show the power of having a Smart Recorder for your front end people who are getting swamped by calls, especially right now. Bob calls in, calls in. He's having a problem with his Windows laptop. I can see his latest open tickets. 
I can see that um, he's had some resolve tickets. If it's related, I can say, you know, maybe saying you need some stuff rolled back. I could go ahead and open up that ticket and look at it. But this is something new and take it pretty quickly. Something new is wrong. If there's any relevant resources, they'll go ahead and show me that. And I'm going to look through the templates. There's nothing all that relevant, uh, nothing too relevant in knowledge. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a ticket. But again, a lot of information without having to click open Windows, save it. It's going to get assigned to the appropriate queue and get worked on, et cetera. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my ticket console again. This is meant to be an abbreviated version of our normal full demos. I really just now want to walk through the whole idea of um, the incident problem change realm. So in the ITIL world, of course, let's say I'm finally able to get to this ticket and Joe can't log into the billing service. Well, I may want to go ahead and relate this to a problem record. I can relate it to an existing problem record or create a new one very easily. And that's important because we all know problem investigations are used to reduce the amount of repetitive incidents. And you know, we analyze the root cause, find out what's going on, then go ahead and relate it to problem. This one's already closed, so probably not a good idea to relate to it. But if it was open, my problem managers would know another ticket came in against it. And then they could go ahead and take a look at that and see what things are going on. If I wanted to go ahead and create a problem. I can do that from here as well. Becoming down to related problem investigation, confirm and save, and that'll end up in my problem manager queues as well. So that's how you do the incident to problem piece of ITIL. And then of course, the next step is to say, well, well I need to create a change request we figured out what's going on with this billing system. We're going to finally fix it by restarting it. So I'm going to link to a change request, and change request in BMC ITSM is very powerful. I'm going to start with a template to make my life easier, but I wouldn't have to. I'm going to start with a template, and what I like about the way they've done Smart IT Change is how easy it is to use while still maintaining all the power that we expect in a BMC ITSM solution. I just have to walk through these five tabs over on the left, which I can also do by hitting next step to create this change request. I'm not getting one big form, but I have to figure out where I need to go. But I'm getting a form that's filled out with my template values, and I can modify them if I need to. I'm going to go ahead and modify that one because uh, that's going to hit an approval process. And again, I can either hit next step or I can hit the tab over here on the side. Well, we can see the billing application server that I'm starting is already attached to my change because of my template, but if I did want to attach some more configuration items, very easy to search, find my other configuration items, and relate them if I want to. I don't want to do that right now, so I'm going to move to the next one, dates. This is just kind of an operational change calendar that's in the system to kind of let you know what's going on. Let me go ahead and put a couple dates in here. And now I can see if I'm looking at this, my change is appearing here. I don't have any change collisions. If I did, I would be getting alert notice over on the left so I could see that there is a change collision. Change collision is when there are two changes against the same asset that overlap start and end dates. I don't have any. I'm good to go. I can keep moving on. If I wanted the full calendar, I can come up to this calendar link and open it up. This is really just so I can see basically what's going on right now so I can start getting my change into the, into the system. The risk part of Fremity is very, or ITSM is very uh, robust too. I could just pick a risk value, right? <laughs> Put my finger in the wind, I think it's such and such. But it's more accurate if I answer risk questions. So you can tie risk questions to, um, to the categorizations of the change. I'm going to say I can't test it and can't be rolled back. So these risk questions can be different for different kinds of ch changes depending on the categorizations. And that way it's going to calculate a risk value, which can then affect your approval process. So great so far. Now I'm going to hit this last step, documents, which is the one I was always really bad about as a change person. But now I'm being forced to say, hey, is there anything you should attach to the change? Okay, okay, let me go ahead and find my business justification. And we're going to go ahead and find over something. Not a very good business justification, but what the heck. Very easy to attach things. I could add another type of document if I wanted to, or I could say, now I'm ready to submit a change. So you can see, very easy to walk through the five steps, put in the data, but I'm also still being told what to do to make sure I don't miss any of the steps. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this change, 
It's going to do something called an impact analysis, which is based upon the configuration item attached, which is the billing system application server. What else am I going to be impacting? So as this change is getting created, one of the things I want to mention is Remedy is really good. Helix ITSM or Remedy is very good at the ITIL processes. It really dots the I's and crosses the T's. There's flexibility within the data. There's flexibility, you know, different approval processes, different templates, different status transition models. So you get a lot of flexibility, but it is a very strong ITIL process. Over here, I can see, for example, this is my status transition for this change. For my simple changes, or I maybe just want to go from draft to implementation and progress to closed, I can set up a different transition model and tie the changes to those. So there's a lot of power behind the scenes that we do not have time to get in today because we're just giving you a quick overview of change itself. I'll go ahead and uh, refresh this and start showing a couple of alerts. So it's saying I need to approve this and it's still preparing the impact analysis. Well, I hate to approve it before the impact analysis, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I did get an email, so I can approve via email. I can approve on my mobile client. I'm just gonna approve by here one of the nice things about Remedy Helix ITSM is it figures out if there's more approvers needed or not. So whenever I'm moving it through its status change, through its state model, status transition thing you see here, it's going to check at every possible stage if there are any approvers left. So right now I'm sitting in draft. I'm going to go ahead and refresh. It says, oh, nope, we're now in request for change. We don't have any more approvers. I could have had more approvers, group of people, multiple levels, et cetera at any particular point in time. Now let's see, if look at this impact analysis. And this is what I was talking about. It's based upon the data in my configuration management database. We'll talk about how to get it there in a full demo. I can go ahead and build impact relationships. I can see when I'm bringing down my application server, restarting it, here's everything I'm impacting, including sonogram imaging, which I may not have known about. My approvers probably would have liked to have known about that before they went ahead and approved the change. But I'm going to go ahead and attach all those configuration items now to the change so that we can go ahead and see everything that is going to be impacted. So a lot of capabilities in here. And again, we're only doing this for a short time today. So we're going to go ahead and not talk too much more about change. Just know it's very robust. Okay. The last thing I want to mention is around reporting. The Helix ITSM solution uses a technology called Yellowfin, BMC OEMs it. They have very powerful reporting out here. Go out and look, it's yellow, like a color, thin like the fish, and it'll start showing you some of the capabilities of this product. So I'm drilling down this dashboard, it's refreshing other pieces of the dashboard. Keep going down, I can see I have things change management and service desk. Again, other things are getting refreshed as I do this. Easy enough to go ahead and build these reports. I'm not that good at it, so I'm not gonna do a lot of it. But I would just go to create reports, pick my table, and build a report. We can, of course, go through that more. If you're interested in using Helix ITSM and interested in a full demo, please contact your RightStar sales rep. We'll give you that info in a second. But did want to let you know there's a robust reporting tool based upon Yellowfin. You can do things like schedule reports to get emailed out. You can comment on reports. There's a whole social aspect. A lot you can do with it. Now we're running up against our time, so I don't want to take too much more time out of this. But hopefully you all did see the kinds of things you wanted to see in the solution. We just um, get back into where I wanted to get to. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to my PowerPoint now. And wanted to show you again how you can contact your sales uh, person if you wanted to. Go ahead and email sales at rightstar.com. If you don't know who your right star salesperson in is, and they'll be happy to connect you up, get you more information about Helix ITSM, and arrange for a longer, fuller demo. But I hope this was useful for now. Thank you so much for your time.